Hello and a welcome back to a new week, new game, where I play a game that I've never played before. Game sources come over from a variety of things, ranging from Steam and other PC launchers, because there's too many to name, and I don't feel like doing that, and consoles, which also have too many things to name, and I don't feel like doing that. Today's game comes from Steam. Surprise, surprise. A destroyer, the U-Boat Hunter. I have gone into uh, just randomly rolling. I have a, a folder on Steam, and then I use a, another website to randomly roll with what I have in that folder. And whatever number it lands on, that's the game that we play. So this, this is the one. I have more than likely picked this up through a bundle of some kind, randomly rolled. Fanatical has this thing where it's like 20 keys for $14, random games. And I was doing a thing where it was like every paycheck, I'm just going to go get one of these, see what I get. Um, and instead of just letting them sit in my Steam li library, ugh, excuse me, I, I put them now into that folder and play them oh, once a week for about 30 minutes sometimes less because I, I do an intro and it runs long like right now that's what's happening I'm just wasting away not actually playing the game and explaining to you you know what the what's going on what's the situation you know how's it going anyways without further ado let's get in the game uh, so there's a few things here. Start battle, career mode, in tutorial. I've never played this game before. I don't know. Can I use my controller on this? I can't. We're just mouse and keyboarding it. Uh, I want to do career mode, and I'm hoping if we do career mode, it's going to have a little explanation tutorial thing. The career mode comprises nine missions whose goal is to get subsequent convoys across the Atlantic. Each mission consists of several battles against the U-boats attacking your convoy. After the last battle of each mission, your performance will be evaluated by the Commodore. Next, you will be assigned a new, more demanding mission, and the results from these missions will determine your overall career score. Once you've completed the final mission, the Commodore will decide what happens next to your career with the U.S. Navy. This mode allows you to save your game at any time and to restart each battle as many times as you wish. Recommended for new or less experienced destroyer captains. Hey, that's me. I'm a new or, or less experienced destroyer captain. Uh, this menu allows you to determine the difficulty level of the game. Make sure to adjust the settings in accordance with your preference for maximum game enjoyment. Uh, wolf pack size, large. The enemy force will be large. Frequent attacks. Uh, depth charge efficiency. Sinking a U-boat will be difficult. So do we want to hit with a large realistic? We'd go to a small... A medium small large medium they didn't put that in the proper order and then realistic increased exaggerated realistic I do like realistic should I go with large though why not sure we'll do that I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy it or not it might be what but makes it breaks all this I don't know what was this cutscene Iron Wolf Studio. Look at that classic car. A lot of curves in classic cars. I wonder if car designers saw those and were inspired by curvy women to design them that way. Destroyer, the U-Boat Hunter. Noticed a bit of lag right there, too. That's not good. Is 
Salud. Is that my character? Jansen arriving. There's like subtitles there for a moment, now they're gone. Gotta salute the flag before we step on the ship. If you don't do that, the flag comes to life and will kill you while you're sleeping. So it's a, it's a tradition. Good evening, Captain. All preparations for getting underway are on schedule. The XO is already on board, as are the department heads. Two boilers are lit off and building steam. Everything is on track for a dawn departure. Very well, thank you. Definitely didn't sound like AI at all. Executive officer to the officer's wardroom. Wonder who this executive officer guy is. If that guy's sponging were to stop sponging to turn and salute at me, I'd yell at him. You don't stop sponging. We have been assigned to lead a very small formation. The bad news is that the only other escort we have is about as slow and lightly armed as some of the merchant ships we're traveling with. That is bad news indeed. Weren't we supposed to have more escorts? I was hoping for that too, but our convoy and routing division does not have enough of them, apparently. The Canadians are helping as much as they can, but until they send the next wave of reinforcements, we will have to make do with less. I am not reading this off a sheet. Against. The U-boat threat has been rather limited recently, so that seems like good news for our friends from the Merchant Navy. And what about air support? PBYs taking off from several bases should be available most of the time during daylight. And what does the weather look like? Some needed good news, XO. The weather report looks favorable all the way across. If that is all, then let's get a good night's sleep. It may be the last one we get for a while. And so it begins, my first Atlantic Pass. Let's just hope it won't be the last. There are so many things I do not know. What kind of sandwich you think he's eating? Very little is under my control. The crew has been trained, but few have seen actual battle. And a grilled cheese. How will they respond when facing the enemy? Maybe a tune them out. How will I respond? Could just be bread. The Jansen is the most capable ship in the convoy. Doesn't look like it has it crust fast, on it. Maneuverable and heavily armed. Not good to eat crustless shit sandwiches. I feel anxious for the merchant crews. Should have it with the crust they on. We are sitting ducks. Their only protection is this ship and the single Canadian escort. Crusts are good for you. Gotta, gotta eat those crust off the sandwiches. We are to rendezvous with the RCN at Halifax. I hope the crew can take some liberty there. With only two escorts, it will be difficult to protect the convoy from all sides. We will have to focus on priority contacts. If at least one U-boat gets through, this can easily turn into a bloodbath. The guy with the headphone mic is actually being punished. The weather forecast seems quite favorable. We can use the break and get some good crew training done early on in the voyage. That's why he has that on there. Finally, some good news. We should have air cover all the way across. One aircraft with a good crew is worth half a dozen escorts when it comes to looking ahead of the convoy. It's actually a torture device. Allied intelligence thinks that there are a few U-boats along our path, suggesting low chances of enemy contact. I really hope that is correct, but my gut tells me otherwise. Because the captain's there just berating him. And when he cries, it goes over the whole speaker on the ship so everyone can hear it. And, uh, it's what it is. You know, it just makes fun of him. Says his mom's hot, you know, those types of things that make people cry. That's like Battleship. A4. Mounty holds a possible sub. Bearing three one one range three thousand nine hundred yards from Mounty convoy will turn left to avoid Mounty break escort to attack sub Bloodhound break convoy to assist Roger moving toward Mounty out bridge combat new contact from sonar bearing three one one range three thousand nine hundred yards I designate contact able time thirteen fifty two Bloodhound this is Mounty. Mounty now has sonar contact. Able. Bearing 309. Range 3900 yards from Bloodhound. 
Captain I. No, nah, that's not deck, my name. Set general quarters. Set general quarters, I. General quarters, general quarters, all hands man your battle stations. Set condition zebra throughout the ship. Bloodhound, this is Mountie. Mountie now has sonar contact. Okay, I gotta take the only life vest on the ship. Zero, seven, range, 4,000 yards from Bloodhound. Stern depth charge, detail, manned and ready. Main battery ports, manned and ready. Engineering officer watch reports, engineering, manned and ready. Zebra set. Four boilers online. Max speed 32 oh. knots. Electric plant split. All fire pumps online. Very well. Bloodhound, this is Mountie. Mountie now has sonar contact. Wow. Table. Bearing 306. Range this, uh... 4,000 yards from Bloodhound. It's a lot. Bloodhound, this is Mountie. Mountie lost contact. Able. Left. So, uh... I think we should definitely go try the tutorial. That's a lot of controls. Well, we got some wonderful performance from the, the AIs they have to do the voices there. You want the tutorial? Yes. Let's start it. The Battle of the Atlantic took place in the 1940s. Oh. During that time, most U-boats were still diesel electric and so could not stay submerged for prolonged periods of time. Therefore, you're very likely to detect them on the surface using radar before they close in for the attack. Once a U-boat submerges, you can no longer detect it using radar, and you will have to use sonar instead. Unlike radar, the sonar of the 1940s had to be pointed in the appropriate direction in order to detect the enemy. Bear that in mind when you lose radar contact with the enemy, and, most importantly, remember this. Radar works only for surfaced contacts, while sonar works only for submerged contacts. Uh. Last but not least, the 1940 sonar also has a dead zone right under your destroyer, which is crucial to remember. The most important thing you need to understand, however, is that everything at sea is ruled by the compass. Consequently, every instrument, report, and command also refers to it. It works just like the clock, with 000 or 360 at the top, 090 on the right, 180 at the bottom, and 270 on the left. These three digit codes are called bearings, and they refer to the cardinal points. 000 or 360 is the north, 090 is the east, 180 is the south, and 270 is the west. So, if there is a contact at bearing 090, it means that it is located east of our position. This system allows the crew to quickly exchange information regarding where the enemy has been detected, what course to take, and so on. Once you understand it, it quickly becomes second nature. In summary, the most important information for you will always be the position of the currently tracked enemy, which is given in bearings. Which direction? In ranges, how far away from your position? The last thing you need to know is how to execute a successful depth charge attack. The problem consists in hitting a moving object in 3D space with a weapon that has a considerable delay between being fired and hitting the target. <laughs> Did we get him? Who knows? In general, the attack has to be made in such a way as to drop the depth charges with a lead ahead of the U-boat's bow. What is more, the depth charge fuse must be set for shallow, medium, or deep. Bear in mind that the deeper you set the fuse, the longer it takes the depth charges to reach the set depth. The optimal time to drop depth charges is calculated by an analog computer called the Tactical Range Recorder. It measures the speed of closing the distance between your destroyer and the target, and will help you to decide when to give the order to fire. Because of that, pay close attention to what the tutorial says about using the TRR, as it will make the difference between success and failure. In reality, the chances of hitting a U-boat with depth charges were rather slim, but due to the devastating effects that even close misses had on the submarine's morale, 
harassing and suppressing the U-boat was often enough to make its crew abandon further attack attempts, at least for some time. Now that you understand the most essential facts about anti-submarine warfare in the Second World War, you can proceed with the tutorial. All right. What did we just learn? Welcome to the tutorial. The bridge is where you control the destroyer's maneuvers. Let's start with changing the ship's speed, which you can do through the engine order telegraph. Right now we are sailing at ahead one third. Click on ahead standard to increase speed. All engines ahead standard. All engines ahead standard. Aye, sir. Yes, that's the way to do it. Observe how our speed is rising from 8 knots to 25 knots. There are more speed options to choose from. However, remember that at a head full and a head flank, you won't be able to use the sonar. All right, so these ones can't use sonar. You can also control the engine order telegraph from any station by clicking on its representation on the left or by using the W and S keys to select the end or so uh, or by using the W and S keys to select and enter to confirm new speed. Use S key and confirm with enter. I'm gonna go to full. Or click on the engine order telegraph on the left. Select a head one third. Oh, it was just pointing to say like this is where it's at. All engines ahead one third. All engines ahead one third. All right. Aye, sir. Well done. Let's see about steering now. The compass is currently showing course zero 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 magnet north. Courses related to bearings. So if your course is zero zero zero. That means you are heading exactly northward. There are a few different ways to steer the ship. The first is by means of the helm, which works just like the steering wheel in a car. Click and hold the left mouse button and drag it fully to the left. Hard left rudder. Hard left rudder. Aye, sir. Observe how the helm indicator has changed position. Excellent. We are now turning left. Another way to steer is by clicking on the helm indicator. This is very useful for keeping the disc destroyer turning at a given radius. Try making a 35 degree turn by clicking here. Hard right rudder. Hard right rudder. Aye, sir. All right. Observe how the course is changing. Now center the helm by clicking at zero on the helm indicator. Uh, this one here. Steady as that she goes. There. Aye. Steady on course. Three, four, five. You can also steer from any station by clicking on the helm indicator or the left, uh, on the left, or by using the A and D keys to select and enter confirm. Uh, turn right either by using the D key and confirm with enter or by clicking on the helm indicator on the left select 20 degrees right to proceed Rudder 20 degrees right Rudder 20 degrees right. Aye, sir. Well done Another convenient way to change course is to click on the compass representation on the left you can either click along its circumference and select the course you wish, or you can press enter. Type the course in and confirm by pressing enter again. This can also be done after clicking on the current course. Click on the current course input 010 and press enter. And uh, it let us choose. Oh, it's just all by clicking. Zero ten, I was there. Click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. Sure. Let's 
just could type it in. Enter. Of course. Zero. One. Zero. Of course. Zero. The old numbers zero. did not go I, away, though. Good. Now you know all about maneuvering. I forgot everything. Let's move on to attacking. Enemy U-boat has been detected to attack it. First, let's take Surface a look. Radar has a new contact. Thank you. Bearing uh. zero five niner range. 2,900 yards. Got Bridge it. combat. New surface contact from radar. Bearing 059. Mm. Range 2,900 yards. I designate contact. Able. Time 09. Anyways, enemy U boat has been detected. Contact. Able. Rude. Now Just interrupted me. 059. Range 2,700 yards. To attack it first, let's take a look at the target bearing indicator. This device is extremely useful as it displays our ship's silhouette, the current target bearing in relation to it on the uh, rotating ring, as well as magnet north, the three lines with Contact extending cable, from the center. Bears, zero, five, eight, range 2,600 yards. A quick glance is all you need if your target bearing is aligned with the bow of the ship silhouette, then you're steering right way to pursue your target. Additionally, the Ratter, Ratterman is now regularly reporting the target Contact data. Contact Able, Who's talking? now bears zero, five, seven, range 2,600 yards. Let's use these coordinates as well, the target bearing indicator, to close the distance and get within 2,000 yards of the target. Give it a try. Increase your speed and steer so that contact able is in front of you. Listen to the contact radar man able. and adjust bears, zero, the course to five, match what he says. Six, or watch the bearing indicator yards. and align the bearing t with the bow. All right. Now uh, looks like we need to go here to 360. Or is that a 350? It's 350. Contact able now bears zero five six range two thousand six hundred yards. And then contact able now bears zero five five range two thousand six hundred yards. Uh, new course zero five five course zero five five aye sir. And then we want to go all engines ahead standard. All engines ahead standard aye sir. Contact able now bears zero. Five, five, range, 2,700 yards. Still says zero, five, five, but it looks like that's going away. Are we going the wrong direction? Contact, able, now bears, zero, five, four, range, You probably need more steering practice, yards. but let's move on. Oh, well, I thought I was doing the right way. Zero, five, four. It's where five, five is what he was saying. That's what he was saying, though. Uh, in any case, a good tip for beginners is to listen Contact to the bearing able, given by the radar man zero, five, and two, steer accordingly, range, same course as the given yards. bearing. Following that course is the easiest way to get closer to the enemy. Once you begin approaching, it is time to start tracking the submarine before we leave the bridge take a look around by holding down the left mouse button and moving the mouse you can do this at Contact almost any station to examine your surroundings zero, right. four, niner, range, click on combat to move to the yards. cic the radar shows surface contacts, so you may want to take a look at it anytime you need an up-to-date picture of the situation on the surface. You can use the radar to check your position in relation to the convoy, Contact as well as the current escort zero, positions four, and six, surface U-boat positions. Yards. You can zoom in and out by scrolling the mouse wheel and move the camera around by pressing the wheel. Let's 
see you. Contact oh, pressing the mouse wheel. Zero, four, now let's see four, how you range, can track on your own maneuvers versus yards. enemy maneuvers. Click on DRT to continue. Where's DRT? Oh, down here. Oop. The Dead Reckoning Tracer will help you plan your maneuver in a relation to the enemy. The moving light under the glass Contact surface represents table, our destroyer. Zero, and it has bearings one, on range, its outer circumference to yards. help you decide what course to take. The dots represent our destroyer's position and the cross represent the U boat's position you can plan your maneuver by observing how the positions change in relation to each other with Contact the passage of time now bears zero, there are two scales three, you can eight, switch between range, yards. as soon as the enemy is below a thousand yards we recommend to switch to the 1 100 yds scale there are two scales you can switch okay we did that continue uh, you can drag the moving light by holding down the Contact left mouse button, now bears allowing zero, you to three, scroll six, the range, plot around. Continue. You can zoom in and out as well as scroll the camera around by using the mouse scroll wheel. Spin the wheel to zoom in and out or press it and move the mouse to scrolling the camera around. Camera zoom and scroll is available at almost every Contact station in the game. Zero, I could three, do a shoom. Three, range, shoom. Yards. Yeah, this thing's just getting further and further away. Um, continue. Let me just uh, see something here. Yeah, it's 27 minutes. I'm gonna actually just quit back to the menu. Now, I enjoy a good simulation game. This one definitely does have what seems to be all the mechanics of controlling a destroyer U-boat type vessel, which is great, especially for uh, simulation. If you really want that kind of real feel to it, and it kind of looks like they covered all bases. I'm going to be going through that tutorial a while. It's definitely going to go over 30 minutes and then uh, getting into starting a battle or even going back to career mode would make this video probably way over an hour. Um, in all honesty, I was getting a little overwhelmed with all the things that were going on and I better understood the mechanics. Maybe it had been a different story, but even as they're explaining it to me, there's just so much that it's like, I'm not I'm going to forget how some of these things work. And uh, I just uh, well, it wasn't for me. But I can see people who are into these types of things, especially like military buffs or even people who may have participated and did some of this stuff. That's assuming there's still people who were in World War II that are still alive. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, for me, no, it's not. And it's mainly just because it's like I'm not really into it. All of the mechanics and things and just the, the real details into the stuff just isn't my type of thing but that doesn't make it a bad game at all that just means that's a personal preference on my part uh the game seemed very detail oriented with the controls and everything i will say the one thing that it could have worked on was better voice actors i don't know who they got to do like the voice acting but it was very robotic which is why i was calling them ai this game has a 2022 copyright down there at the bottom when did the game come out so it may not be like ai that they're using but it just sounds like when siri or somebody responds actually i think siri's probably got more of a a human-like sound and tone in their voice uh december 6th 2023 is when this game released actually just last year so it could have been ai who knows this is a fairly recent game. Crazy. And it's on sale right now for 50% until September 21st. For $14.99, you too could own this game and go through the tutorial and see if it overwhelms you like it did me. <laughs> uh, one game I do like, though, is War Thunder. Very similar 
well i don't want to say very similar it's not very similar it's a war game and it does have boats that you can go through and play it doesn't have the amount of detail that it tells you to do things on here but uh Going and doing the combat on there seemed more manageable than doing the combat through this game. And again, personal preference is just me, myself, getting overwhelmed with it, which is why I say that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the game. That is Destroyer, the U-Boat Hunter. It's not a great video, I would say, just because I didn't really get too too into the game we gave it a taste and uh found it not tastely <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna move on but i uh, yes sometimes you get these videos where it's just like you play the game and you don't really like it not every video i make is gonna be you know a shiny this is a great game here's everything that i enjoyed about it we, we get bad ones from time to time <laughs> anyways that is gonna do it for me thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next game goodbye